Good afternoon. My name is Kelly Gillespie and I'm going to lead you through a windward template building exercise today. I've got a simple invoice on screen, skeletal document with just some static text. And I'm going to begin by populating this with some data tags and then out tag the appropriate data in the appropriate parts of the document. To begin, I'll come over to data sources and connect to a data source. You notice the icon turns to green when we've successfully connected. And the data bin verifies by allowing us to see the tables of views and stored procedures available to us. To start, I'm going to take advantage of two native word features. One on the home ribbon for show high paragraph marks. This shows me non-printing characters like carriage returns, tabs, spaces, and helps me position my cursor effectively in the document. I also like to exploit this table tool layout design ribbon here for view grid lines. I don't turn the borders on, but I often split and merge table cells to control the layout of my document, both static text and dynamic text alike. With those two things turned on, I'm ready to start positioning my cursor and dropping tags. To start, I'm going to build an input parameter that allows me to filter down to a unique customer record and the related orders for that customer. So I can do that by clicking on input parameters and adding a new input parameter, my customer, where I give it a default value and use it at runtime to filter down to a unique record. Once I've given that a default value, I'll save that off, position my cursor right above this table, and add a query tag. Query tag holds a one side record. So I'm going to give that the name customer because that's the data it's going to hold. And I'm going to give it the same nickname customer. I'll begin by opening it up in the tag editor and expanding the data source to find that customer table and drag over the company name. I'll use the wizard to create my filter. This drag and drop interface allows me to expand the data source in the pane to the left, find the fields I'm interested in, like address, city, region, postal code, and simply drag and drop the data I require. I can see the real-time results of the pane to the right, and here in the middle, I'm able to create a filter so that I can uniquely find that customer record where the customer ID is equal to the runtime parameter I created in the previous step. Once I've done that, you see it filters down to Great Bates Food, food Market. It's built to select for me here in the bottom window, and I'm ready to proceed. Again, I like to preview as I go to make sure I got the data I want. And now I'm ready to start dropping tags and pointing them to the data I've retrieved. Out tag for company name. I'll do one for the address, the city, comma space, the region or state, of course, the postal code. I'm going to also make this text the same size as the surrounding text, 12 points. And what I'll do is I'll start by using the data tree. Although I can find it in the tag editor, I can get there a click sooner with the data tree. You see the query tag we populated here, customer. And I'm able to point to the data I want that out tag to be assigned or associated with. Address, city, region, and of course, the postal code. You see how easy it is to assign these tags. Very straightforward. In the interest of saving time, I'm going to copy these out tags for ship to, uh, build to over here to ship to, and make them the same. And for some reason, this bottom row here changed color, so I'm going to turn back to black. There we go. Uh, and I can change them back to the right color by just clicking through them. Make sure that they look the same. It's also 12. And Arial. Not bold. Okay, now that I've got all the tags looking the same, I'm ready to start working on my orders. I've got a table already set up down here with the column headings, and I always begin by putting a for each tag right below the column heading in the first row, and an end for each in the bottom row. And remember, everything between these two tags repeats for each record in the record set. So now I'm able to start dropping out tags for the associated columns of data that follow. Let's see, just a couple more here. Again, I'm going to size these tags to be the same as the surrounding text, 12. I'll start by firing off this for each, but first I'm going to name it orders, because that's what it's going to be. Now I'm going to fire up the editor, 
And I'm going to use the wizard to build out this select statement. I'm interested in the orders. I can get a customer ID in there for my filter. And I'm going to need a product ID to find the product. And I need the unit price and the quantity. As I drag and drop again, you can see the real-time results here. To add my filter, I click in the middle as we've done before. Drill down to those orders where the customer ID is equal to, you guessed it, my runtime parameter for my customer. I see all G Reels orders in the pane to the right. It's built a select statement for me, including the inner joints. Love the wizard. Preview as I go. I see you have a proper variable name here. So I'm ready to close that tag and start populating these out tags. Again, I can go to the out tag, point to the data tree, expand my for each loop, and put my order ID in there. Give that the nickname ID so it does not take up so much room in the in the tag editor. We can again preview to see what we get. I'll move this out of the way, size this window so you can see as I move step across tags. Now we're under product name, but when I expand the for each variable and drag and drop product ID, I get a number, not a product name. That's not what I'm interested in. So again, I'm going to use my wizard. I'll expand down to the products table. Bring over the product name, which is what I want to see, and use the filter to look it up by product ID, right? I'll go to the product table. I'm interested in the product where the product ID is equal to the for each variable or column that brings back the product ID. And you see I get a name here. So that's what I'm after. Again, I can preview as I go and see I'm getting product names. I'm going to move off to the next column here. I'm going to expand orders and bring over unit price. Again, I preview, I see I get numbers, but they're not formatted. So I'll come over here to the properties ribbon, type that as a number, and format it as currency. Again, I can preview as I go to make sure it's right before I move along. Now I'm going to expand the four eaches. I'm going to drag the quantity over here to the query window, preview. I got a nice integer, so I'm going to move along to the total column. And here I'm going to combine two fields. I'm going to take the quantity times the unit price right that's going to make my line total and when i preview that i get a number so when i come to the properties ribbon again i want to make this a type number and i'm going to format it as currency but i'm going to do one more thing i'm going to give this out tag a variable name line total so i can aggregate the, the line totals into a grand total later and since it's in a table, I'm going to use a shorter nickname and just call it total. Now I've got my for each populated. And all I need to do is add a set tag outside the context of the for each. Since set tags don't show up in your output, there's no sense in formatting them. I'll call this my G total or grand total. And I'll open it up in the tag editor and give it an initial value of zero. Now I'll select the tag, copy it, and put it right after line total here. And I'll zoom in here. You see that little show hide paragraph marks. It's showing me that extra space, and I can get rid of it. Remember, set tags don't show up in the output. So following line total is necessary for me to aggregate the total. Now I'll edit this set tag and simply expand these two set tag variables that I've created, one with an out tag, one with a set tag, and G total is going to equal itself plus line total, isn't it? And that's how I aggregate in the context of this for each to get my final number. Again, it's a type number. Now it's just a question of positioning my cursor inside the table, dropping an out tag, formatting it to be the size of the surrounding text and then assigning it to that grand total it's a number and it'll be formatted as currency if we've done this correctly we've just built out a one word template very quick and easy in under about 10 minutes you pass in the runtime variable it populates the one side record and the mini side records i can turn off these show hide paragraph marks and grid lines now and you can see how very attractive customer invoice in less than 10 minutes.